Have you ever played on Endgame on Inertia just thinking it's going to be a dead draw? Well, maybe what happened to you then is that you made some blunder and suddenly lost. And in this game between Nakamura and Karawana from Title Tuesday 2024, we're going to see how Nakamura is able to leverage that Knight vs. Bishop in balance to win what normally would just be a dead draw on Endgame. Um, now this is a Blitz game, there's always going to be some tricks with the Knight in play, but yeah, from this point we can already see that, well, the Black Bishop is quite passive, tuck behind the pawns, the Indian says it doesn't really matter, but yeah, no, then this position we're not going to rush to take that Bishop, because even though it looks like we're winning a pawn, actually there's a move Rook B2, and we are going to run into some some problems here, so make sure not to do that as white, you don't want to overpress and lose either. But Nakamura found a great move of knight g6, just kind of asking black how he's going to deal with this fork on uh, on e5, as it were. Now, to my mind, the best answer is probably just to, uh, well, it's a little bit tricky because if you play king f5, he looks a bit nervous to allow, like, knight h4. But it turns out here the knight is kind of stuck and that it ends up just being a, still a drawish kind of ending, which is really hard for white to kind of free his knight and use the extra pawn. Like, if knight g2, we can even play, like, king g4, and the fact we have this, like, rook h2 idea just really slows off white quite a lot at this point, uh, plus king h3, and, and the tactics just kind of work in, in this instance. It's hard for white to get out of the pin, you know, without giving up the g3 pawn. Um, so that's probably the most effective answer, but okay, you do have to sack a pawn in that case. So we can see how Nakamura has set these little problems, um, like, say, if you go rook b6, I mean, this is maybe is the simplest where you just defend, you know, both your pawns in this way and just hold. But instead, black played the move rook h1. And this ends up being, yeah, a little bit of a an imprecision as after king g5. So maybe what Caruana was expecting here is he was expecting white just to automatically play knight c6. And then after take, take, rook a1, even though white's a pawn up, black's going to have enough counterplay of like rook a2 and the king coming in to be able to hold. And yeah, you can stop with rook c2, but that's also just really passive. And black will just be able to, yeah, just be really annoying, like rook a6. And, you know, get the king in, stop their pawn, and there's not a lot white can really do to make so much progress, objectively speaking. Um, but Nakamura found a really great move here, and, you know, well done if you if you saw it as well. Turns out that rook c5 is a really nice idea, where we kind of prepare the knight c6 move to give it a bit more strength. And this is where... Kawana made the decisive mistake. Obviously, both players would have been in quite short on time. You know, only on the, like, one second increment. But here, if Black plays King F6, like, he does still have... Even a pawn down, he still has quite decent chances to survive here. Um, you know, D5 is actually not as scary as it looks, because the bishop ends up being a pretty decent blockader. So, probably White's best bet would be go Knight D8, like, just continue harassing the bishop. And, yeah, I mean, your Knight can come around, and obviously White still has decent chances to win, but this was the way to at least stay in the game as black. Whereas after h3, you know, knight c6, and you know, it's just the capture is too strong here. Um, I think, yeah, Kawana probably thought he could play, like, king h4, and, you know, if rook d5, play rook h2, and sort of, like, get this counterplay of the h-pawn to sort of keep him in the game. But Nakamura found a very strong intermediate move of g3 here, and after king g4, knight e5 check, another strong intermediate move, not falling into the you know, the counterplay with, like, Rook H2, and it's actually a little bit crazy to me that this, uh, that this position is, like, 0, 0, 0 to the, to the inch, and I guess that speaks to, yeah, how strong the perpetual check idea with, like, this and the past H1 is going to be. Uh, but Nakamura found the intermediate move 95, which just cuts that out completely, where now, yeah, White was able to bring his, his knights into defense with a, with a tempo. Um, but, yeah, you can just actually play Knight H2, but it does mean that yeah, after they give these checks, you are going to have to give the knight back anyway, like h2, and, and okay, you are still winning there, but yeah, Nakamura played g4 instead, which also does the trick, like rook h5, to stopping the counterplay, and yeah, it was pretty easy for white to to win it from here, like just a matter of just trading off their h-pawn for one of your pawns, or, you know, even just queening your, your own pawns of their own accord, and yeah, Caruana resigned in, in this position. Um, yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this short training. Do let me know in the comments below what was your favorite part of it. If there are any topics you'd like me to cover in future trainings, definitely interested to hear that as well. Um, in any case, I will see you in the next training. Take care.